In the next part, we're going to move on to allow a user to activate their account by email. But the only problem is we need to take into account security for this. Now, activating uh, an account isn't too much of a security issue. But in this video, what we're going to do is before we do any of that, set up the ability to generate random strings and talk about encryption. And this is important because when we're sending uh, any identifier uh, to, an e to a user and they click on that, uh, that identifier shouldn't be stored in the database in plain text. It should be hashed. And we need to, first of all, generate random enough strings. So random, um, you know, characters and things like that. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding to our hash helper that we created for hashing passwords as securely as possible. And we're also going to be introducing a new dependency into our application, into the container, which is random lib. And that is a dependency that we installed at the start of the series. So first of all, then let's just add the um, ability to hash something into our hash class. We already have the ability to hash and check passwords, but we need the ability to hash and check just normal hash strings. And for this, we are going to use SHA-256. And you can update this later on if you, if you want to. So we're going to create a new method in here called hash. This is just a general hash. And all this is going to do is it's going to return a hash. We need to take some input into this method. And we need to hash it SHA-256 and then put that input in there. We also need to be able to verify uh, that, that two, hash, two hashes match. So this isn't uh, like the password hashing API. It's a little bit different. Uh, all we're doing is we're taking a known hash and a user submitted hash and comparing them. So uh, you can go ahead and look this up in the PHP manual if you need to find out more information about it. So hash check is going to take a known hash and a user hash. And we're going to return hash equals. This is the uh, function you can look up in the PHP library if you want in the documentation. We pass in the known and the user hash. So we now have the ability to hash and also check that a hash equals another hash. We can now move on to looking at randomly generating strings and numbers. We're not going to be randomly generating numbers, but we are going to be randomly generating strings. So we need to pull into our application uh, the random lib library. So over in start.php, where we're declaring all of our other uh, container attachments, we need to say app container singleton. We're going to call this random lib. And we are going to instantiate a new random lib uh, instance. So we're going to say factory equals new random lib. Now this here needs uh, is under a namespace and it's under the namespace of factory. So what we can do here is we can just say use random lib factory as random lib. That just makes uh, factory make more sense in our code. So we're calling it random lib. So we've done that there. Uh, and now what we want to do is we want to get a type of generator. So we just return factory and we're going to get a medium strength generator. A medium strength generator, the name is a little bit misleading. This is perfectly acceptable uh, in terms of security. Uh, if you pull in a uh, high strength generator, you're going to find your application run really slowly and it's not really worth the extra processing time. You can read all about random lib on the GitHub page and, and, and read the documentation for that. And it will tell you uh, all about these different methods. But for now, what we're doing is we're pulling in random lib and we can generate random strings now. So let's uh, check out how that works. Let's head, head over to our home view and let's use app. Uh, so let's just echo out app random lib generate string. And then we choose the length of the string. I'm going to do one, two, eight. So now we have the following. So we've generated a random 128 length string. So this is uh, really useful for generating long identifiers when we're sending emails to users to maybe activate their account, reset their password. 
And when we store these identifiers in the database, the reason we do that is because what we need to do is we need to look up the identifier. So when we move on in the next part to activating, we have a hash here, which is going to be a hashed version of this identifier. And that will allow us to send this long randomly generated string by email. And then when this is passed through to our application, we can hash this, check that it matches the hash in the database, and then we can activate the user's account. Uh, otherwise, if our database was broken into, and for example, we had the active hash uh, as a sort of plain text string, the user, uh, anyone, any attacker could then activate a user's account. And that might not seem a much of a problem for activating a user's account. It doesn't really matter too much, I guess. But for things like password recovery, that is really dangerous. If you think about it, when you are recovering a password by email, you're sending an identifier. Essentially, that identifier is a user's password. It isn't actually a user's password, but it gives an attacker the ability to reset a user's password. So it's essentially access to someone's account. So all of these hashes that we're storing in here are going to be um, hashed. Well, they are hashes. So uh, that's how we do things like that. So we're now all ready to go. We're going to move on to activating a user's account by email. We have email set up. We have the ability to generate large random strings set up. So we can do that, hopefully, uh, with ease.